What is up everyone and welcome back to another Animus tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about top coating your kits. Now for this kit we decided to go with a uh, matte top coat. Uh, this is usually my preference for all types of kits including kits that I'm just straight building. Uh, if I'm straight building a kit there's not really use for color separating um, clears. So what I do is that I just use a complete uh, top coat and then go from there. As you can see everything just looks nicer whenever you do it. So. Um, I do always top coat my kits just so they, to give them that little bit more life that they deserve, right? So now there are different types of clears, right? Um, there's your can clears, there's your airbrush cleared. For this one, I, I use rattle can as well. I use the Mr. Smooth Clear. Uh, with the Mr. Smooth Clear, uh, it's really nice because it doesn't leave any textures on the plastic, which means that it's just completely smoothed and matted out. Right now, it, again, this all comes down to preference because there are different types of clears that you can use while you're doing your kits. Uh, not necessarily mean that you have to top coat all your kits. Like I said, it's just a preference of mine. Now, there are different types of clears out there to include lacquer, water-based, or if you're using like acrylic, there's acrylic, enamel-based. So it just depends on what the application is going to be. So I use whatever's most accessible to me, which is Mr. Color. Now I do want to disclose whenever you're top coating your kits, please make sure to use it in a ventilated area. Do not spray your kits indoors, especially if you have children, do not do that. You know, or pets or anything of the sort, or even yourself, just do it for your own safety or your own health, right? Uh, these clears have fumes in them, uh, whether they're enamel based or water based, or even if they are um, lacquer based, they'll still have fumes. So just please make sure that you use proper gear whenever you are top coating your kits. It is very important, all right? Please make sure you do it in a ventilated area where there's a garage, or if you have a spray booth, use it in the spray booth. I use a mask even though I do have a spray booth and the area is super ventilated because I don't wanna risk any fumes going into my body, right? So uh, that's the most important thing. Now, if you are gonna use a uh, clear coat that is like a smooth clear, the good thing about the smooth clears is that It'll just leave the top coat being super smooth and you'll barely notice it in the plastic. Uh, it'll it'll look like it's part of the plastic itself and you don't have to worry about um, about it having any textures or unevenness in the paint. Now, now I do want to talk about this premium top coat. So this premium top coat uh, was recommended to me by one of my friends. Um, he uses water based uh, everything. So this I found very interesting. So this premium top coat is water based. And it's probably the best top coat I've used uh, when it comes through to like maybe rattle cans. Um, not only does it go completely flat into the surfaces and it's very abrasive, uh, but it also looks super clean and it doesn't ruin finishes, which is the most important thing. Some top coats are more hot, are hotter than others, I guess. Um, maybe, maybe like Tamiya, Tamiya clear coats are a little bit hotter than the rest. But you, if you use a water-based, then you run less of a chance of having to ruin your finish, uh, whether it's a metallic finish or if it's a candy finish or anything of the sort, you want to make sure that you don't ruin it, right? So now I want to give you some examples on how the top coats will look like. Now, one of them, one of them is going to be your matte coat. The other one's going to be your semi-gloss, and then you're going to have your, uh, your gloss coat. Now, my preference is to use the matte coat and semi-gloss uh, whenever I have color separation in my kits. But like I said, that's just a personal reference. Now you can use all three. Uh, I've seen people that use all three, especially if they have a lot of metallic colors in their kits, uh, just to give it that little bit more uh, life or maybe color separation or maybe distinguish a little bit of the parts a little bit better. Uh, so if you get them close, you can actually see that if you had a part, if you had like three types of parts and they're all painted the same blue, but they have different clear coats, they all look different, uh, which also gives it a little bit more life to the kid. Now, whenever you're prepping your kid, you also want to give it uh, some time to take a look around, maybe see if there's any imperfections or if there's anything else that you need to fix along the way before you top coat your kid. I usually try to use gloves like you've seen me in other videos because I don't want my fingerprints to stick to the plastic and then, you know, my body oils. And then I'm all of a sudden when I'm spraying this clear, I can clearly see my fingerprint on the kit and I don't want that. So uh, I usually try to make sure that I give it a good look around to make sure that everything is good, doesn't have any like fuzz or any uh, dust or anything. And then I make sure I, then I put them on the alligator clips. Now, when you use the alligator clips, Try to place the alligator clip somewhere where it won't bother you while you're painting. That is very important. So just keep in mind that whenever you are going to spray your kit, you always use 
the most conventional way or most comfortable way for you to be able to spray your kit, which is very important because you want to make sure that you only have to do this once, right? Now, whenever you are going to spray your clear coat, this is something that um, a lot of people have questions of whenever I was on Instagram and Facebook. How do you spray your clear coat? Well, it just depends on what you're using. If you're using a hobby type or a hobby grade uh, spray, then you can just do light coats until you get the finish that you want. Um, it doesn't have to be super close. You can actually take the can, you know, a little bit farther away from the part itself. Um, usually if you're spraying gloss, the gloss was very abrasive as well. So you don't really have to give it like heavy coats, a little bit of light coats here and there all the way until you get the result that you want. That's exactly what you're looking for. You want to make sure that it doesn't run too, because it's very bad when clear runs on plastic and it's very noticeable and nobody likes that. Nobody likes how that looks. Now there is another uh, thing that I've learned over time is that you can actually use or save your top coat uh, spray tops and use them on the regular spray cans. So if you bought a Krylon Clear, like the one I recommended, uh, which is very good, according to my buddy, I don't seen his work and the texture that it leaves a kit, it's, it looks great. So um, if you want to use the hobby grade ones on the like Krylon top, you can. You just need to make sure you swap caps and then you're good to go. Uh, why is that? Because hobby grade cans uh, spray a little bit finer, I guess, than the uh, regular spray can. So you want to make sure that whenever you're spraying your kit, you don't you don't like overkill your kit with clear or whatever paint you're using to spray. Oh, it'll bubble up, it'll crack, it'll um, it'll get you know like a, like a bad finish. It's just a bad finish overall. So you want to make sure that you always use light coats whenever you are spraying, regardless of whether you're spraying paint or you are spraying a top coat. That's what's most important. So like I was mentioning before, you know, uh, top coating, like I said, it is a preference. It is a, it is something that you will spray it however you want. You want your, uh, your kit to look like a brand new car and you want that super shiny finish, then you can use a gloss coat. If you want something a little bit more subtle, you can use a semi gloss. And if you want something that looks a little bit more, um, metallic, you know, uh, powder coated, but not gloss, then you use a matte coat. I, like I said before, I like matte coats. I enjoy the matte coats. I love the finishes that it looks. It gives it that little rugged look that everybody looks for in parts, as you can see here in the in the headpiece. Um, and then, you know, it, it kills that shine or reflective shine from the, you know, the light when the light hits it. And I love that. I love that it, look, it makes it look like that. Uh, but that's, like I said, that is just my preference. Everybody has their own preference when it comes to top coating, uh, especially when it comes to top coating kits that are already painted. So it just depends, like I said, it just depends on what you want to do uh, as a builder. So this is just how I prefer to do it. So if you, you know, if you like it, then you can go ahead and try to, you know, practice and do it. You know, for those of you that have never top coated a kid and are scared of maybe ruining the kid or anything like that, don't be scared. This is not, it's not something, it's not complicated. It's not rocket science. Um, you've seen other, other YouTubers out there that will show you how they top code their kids. They'll give you like a 30 minute explanation on how things are done. It's not that serious. You grab the spray, light coat it, let it air dry, and you're good to go. Um, whenever you build your kit, try to make sure that it's already dry before you build it. Otherwise, you will print it. And that, that's definitely something that you don't want to do because then you'll have to either strip it or leave it as is, right? So um, so you don't want that. That's 100% I do not want. Do not recommend that either. So if you, especially if you work so hard to build a kit and then you panel lined it, you put all the water decals on and you just want to spray or top coat it. And all of a sudden now you got a fingerprint on it. So, uh, which is why I always recommend to wear gloves, right? You know, wearing gloves while handling a kit that's been painted is a little bit more forgiving. Uh, being as if the paint is wet, it won't mark it as much and you have a chance of saving it or recovering it or maybe addressing the issue. And that is it for today's video. I would like to thank everyone who watched this video as well to my, all my current subscribers that are following me through social media and also liking and sharing my videos. If you like my tutorials or like my content, please make sure to like and subscribe for future content and future videos. And I will see you all next time for the final episode of this season tutorial. So that way we can go ahead and do a full review on the SDEX Gundam Aerial.